and welcome back to the Sports Source. Thanks for hanging around. Uh, this segment brought to you by Parkside Cabin Rentals doesn't get much doesn't get much better than the Smoky Mountains in October. It's my favorite month of the year. Crisp weather. It's crisp outside. I love that. Mm -hmm. Crisp weather, beautiful colors, and the perfect do-it-yourself vacation getaway. Parkside Cabin Rentals, free parking in downtown Gatlinburg when you want to go down there. Uh, check out any of their any and all of their different uh, layouts for their cabins at parksidecabinrentals.com. You'll be very impressed. They do great work. All right, uh, time to discuss the road ahead for the volunteers. Here's your SEC scoreboard. The teams with the last risk, that means they're still on Tennessee schedule moving forward. Tennessee with the win, Alabama pummeled Texas A&M. Uh, Alabama looks like they are all they're cracked up to be. Texas A&M once again looks like they are not. Uh, Ole Miss gets by Kentucky. Kentucky with a bad decision during the game on a what should have been a touchdown. They lose it in overtime on a missed extra point. Arkansas beats Mississippi State. Uh, on and on and on. Guys, I'll let you take it. Which game stood out to you? And we'll get to Georgia last. But which game stood out to you? To me, it's Arkansas beating Mississippi State. You had Mississippi State riding a high after they beat LSU. You had a quarterback going for 623 yards. And you figure they're going to pummel Arkansas, which had lost, what, 20 SEC games in a row? And then Mississippi State comes out, and K.J. Costello has three picks. He, he completes a lot of passes, but he also completed three to the other team. I was really surprised that Mississippi State had that monumental of a letdown, but that one really caught my attention. You know, and here's one thing that got my attention in this is I thought what was wrong with Georgia last week. Well, maybe Barry Odom, the former Missouri coach, who's now defensive coordinator for Sam Pittman down there, maybe he's got a pretty good defense put together or got him playing the right scheme. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's got tons of talent. Yeah. But that Arkansas defense, which Tennessee will face later this year, might be a little better than we anticipated. Yeah, that's one of the things I had noticed last week. And even yeah. in their first game, Georgia came back. And, and I had my eye a little bit on Kentucky because that's who's going to be here regardless of how it goes at Georgia. You're going to have Kentucky coming into Knoxville next. So I wanted to see how that goes. And uh, it just seems like a, not a very disciplined team, doesn't it? You know, it just to, to make one of the boneheaded plays, if you're waving up to, to the, uh, some of the fans in the stands, which should be a 75-yard touchdown run, somebody tackles you from behind, and then the same player fumbles at the goal line, mm -hmm. and yet goes back in the game. I know a lot of coaches, they, they might not have been in for, for quite a while, but for Lane Kempen to get his first win in overtime on the road, and like you said, Kentucky missed the point after they had the first possession, and then uh, – Ole Miss just goes down, scores, kicks the extra point, wins by one. LSU kills Vanderbilt. No surprise there. Vanderbilt's not going to be much of a challenge, I don't think, for Tennessee this year. Florida handles South Carolina pretty easily. Will, did that change your view of Tennessee's game with South Carolina at all? You know, I thought about that a little bit, but the way I saw that their offense did have some success early on, I thought maybe, okay, South Carolina was a little bit better at times, but then as that game took over, it, so you kind of wonder, was Florida asleep at the wheel early on and just letting those guys play? And then they said, okay, let's turn it on and beat them. So overall, I think South Carolina to me still is, you know, a team that, hey, you could catch them at a wrong moment, but they're still not a good representation of how you're going to do or how much have you progressed from last year. They're still a team you should beat. Okay, Georgia. We wondered what their situation was going to be after last week. JT Daniels still not cleared uh, medically. Uh, they started a guy last week who didn't play well, so they go to the, the, the kid, who, Stetson, uh, who uh, – Stetson Barrett? Ben, Bennett. Bennett. Bennett, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. The, uh, you go to that kid last week, walk on, who transferred away, came back on scholarship. He looked pretty good last yeah. night, good enough. I mean uh, – a little better than a game manager in my view. I thought there were some tight windows he threw the ball into at times. Uh, and their run game, which we wondered about, it didn't take over at Arkansas until late. Mm -hmm. It showed up against Auburn. And Kevin Steele's usually got a pretty decent defense down there. Georgia looks better than I anticipated coming out of that Arkansas game. M me too. I was, in, I was anticipating a really close game with Auburn. In fact, I saw the line at seven, and I almost bet a Chucky C note on it. <laughs> but I, I thought that Georgia would – uh, would struggle more. But I thought uh, Stetson Bennett played well. His numbers were pretty good. He made some good throws. The running game, they had over 200 yards rushing. The other thing that stood out was Auburn only had 39 yards rushing against Georgia. Uh, Georgia did a really good job of stuffing that Auburn run game. But, yeah, I've got a different opinion of Georgia coming out of this game than I did. Uh, here's a, a stat. In, in the last five games, 
Auburn has played Georgia. Auburn has only scored a total of 37 points. Mm -hmm. And they've only, that, that, uh, only once have they scored more than seven, and that was 10. So whatever it is Georgia has, Gus Malzahn hadn't figured it out. Kirby Smart's got his number. Right. Yeah. He, I mean, he really does. Uh, Jeremy Pruitt was asked about the uh, magnitude of the Georgia game last night after Tennessee's win. He didn't shy away from it at all. Let's take a look at it there. Uh, he said, they've got good players. They've got good coaches, but we do too. That's why I came to Tennessee. That's why these players came to Tennessee, is to play in a game like this, so we're looking forward to it. I like that answer. Yeah. I mean, yep. uh, he didn't do the coach speak, the Lou Holtz of the other team, and blow it out of proportion. I think he's sending mm -hmm. a message to his own team that, hey, we can step on the field with these boys. Overstreet, your thought on that? Yeah, I think this team's at a confidence level where you can say that. Like, I don't, you know, in the past, if you'd said that to this team after they've lost several games and been down in the dumps, you can't say that to this team and then think they have a chance to play in this game. I think this team's mentality is now – We've seen what winning looks like, and we have the ability to be in this game and have a chance to win this game. So I think that is one more edge of kind of this is where we are, this is who we're going to be, kind of edge along with the coach there of trying to get the team to continue to believe that they can be in this game and they have a shot. Well, and you have to develop some confidence when you win eight in a row as a program, right? I mean, and, and the reason Jeremy Pruitt got this job was because Tennessee was 0-8 in the SEC. So you, 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 you have some confidence, and you have to lock your personnel. I mean, this is year three. So he, a lot of these players, he likes, he likes them off the field, on the field. And so, yeah, you're saying, yeah, we're going to go there, and, and we're, we're going to give them a game. How big is this game for Jeremy Pruitt? Year three, it's a crazy year. How big is it? Uh, I, I don't I, – that's hard to put it on the level of how big it is. If he doesn't win the game – it's not like, oh, no, Jeremy Pruitt can't get it done, let's fire him. I think it's big in that you want to be competitive with them. Uh, that, that's what you need to have. Look, it's four years ago Tennessee beat Georgia. But I, I do think you want to be competitive. You want to see if at the line of scrimmage if you can hold your own against Georgia, which is key. Can you muster much of an offense against that Georgia team? But uh, for Pruitt, if he doesn't win it, I don't think it's any um, you know, chicken little situation. Uh, if he does win it, boy, his does his stock skyrocket. Yeah, this would be his biggest win at Tennessee, correct? And Tennessee, oh, yeah. yeah, bigger and than Tennessee the will win, yeah. Yeah. make a major jump in the polls as well. Yeah, you would think yeah. if, if you right. if you get your ninth win in a row, start three and zero in the SEC, win at Georgia, mm -hmm. you're looking top ten at that point. So, uh, big opportunity for the Volunteers. When we come back, we're going to make our picks a little later. We'll see if the casino does a good job picking the line this week. Uh, but next, we got three more questions on the vault. Come on back on the sports source.